I hope you're having a good day, and if not, I hope I can make it a little better. Welcome to episode one of the Enchanted Art and Book Club, where we read a book and do some art inspired by it. And today's book is the 1987 Watches by Dean Kunst. Before I start talking about my experiences with the book itself, I guess I better introduce myself as a reader. So, my name is Rachel, and my favourite books growing up were Alice Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll, The Magic Faraway Tree by Enid Blyton, and the Goosebump series. My favourite authors, well, I don't really have any favourite authors as an adult. I feel like my tastes are changing and I haven't quite worked out what they are yet. But um, as a young adult, I really enjoyed Neil Gaiman, and hopefully as an adult, I enjoy him too. But actually, part of keeping this book journal series, I figured would help me work out who my favourite authors are as an adult, so we'll see. My favourite genres are horror, fantasy realism, graphic novels, any kind, and anything with cats. And my favourite places to read? It's anywhere alone, sorry. <laughs> so, on to Watchers by Dean Kunst. And this book was recommended to me by my American pen pal. It is my first experience of anything by Dean Kuntz, but I believe he's a bit of an American institution. He's on a lot of American books you must read before you die lists. And he's kind of like up there with Stephen King. Let me know if I'm right about that. Let me know if you've read anything by Dean Kuntz, uh, if you have a favorite book by him. Um, I have to admit, I am not a fan of Stephen King's writing. I like his ideas, but <laughs> I think it, it goes a bit over the top. So I'm kind of not surprised with how I felt about this book when I saw that he's kind of mentioned in the same breath as Stephen King. So I gave Watchers a 7 out of 10, which is, if we're doing it out of 5, 3.5 out of 5. <sighs> It's listed in a lot of places as being a horror novel, but I really don't think it is. Uh, so I would say it's a suspense book with kind of like science fiction fantasy element. Anyway, here's what it's about. A super smart dog escapes a laboratory chased by a super smart murder monster. The dog finds a family in an oppressed woman called Nora and a suicidal war veteran called Travis. They set up a new life and protect each other from the monster, FBI and a psychotic hitman. <laughs> so what were my first impressions when I started reading the book? Frankly, it was, why are all the female characters in this victims? Apart from Nora's aunt, who we don't actually ever meet because she's like dead before the beginning of the book. All the other female characters in the book are victims, <laughs> one way or another. I just really wanted there to be one female character that started the book. Just like, not even like a superwoman, but just like, in inverted commas, normal you know she just like kind of had herself together she didn't have to be like perfect but she didn't have to be like a total wreck and die within like <laughs> the next page of it being introduced i was just like mm, felt a bit weird <laughs> my final thoughts when reading the book i don't want to do any spoilers but yes <laughs> what is kunz's obsession with guns about <laughs> He goes into so much description about guns, like not just that they have lots of guns, but like he uses the names, he says what make and model they are, what kind of bullets they take. I don't know, it felt like it was that horrible stereotype that all Americans are obsessed with guns, and I know that's not true. Um, but coming off that, I did finally work out that the Uzi is not spelt double O-Z-Y, it's U-Z-I, if you're at all curious. Um, other takeaways I took from the book were Mickey Mouse is infiltrated everywhere. <laughs> Dogs are pure, because you know, I, I'm more a cat person, but I have to admit, after reading this book, I do understand why people love a dog, because dogs are pure. Um, why have a job when you can have babies? Don't even think about being a working one. <laughs> I, I don't want to spoil it again, but when a certain character does um, become less of a victim, they still don't really become an independent woman. Um, that really niggled with me. Another thing that really niggled with me was the villain. He was absolutely like Hollywood 
cinema psychotic bad guy but like in a completely unredeemable way there wasn't a single human characteristic about him i'm not saying that you have to find something likable in a villain but like villains aren't just one dimensional they they are human unless like the villain is a monster if your villain is a human they will have like human needs so for them to be like so completely removed like emotionally and mentally from what it means to be a human just like made me not really care about him i just wanted him to die <laughs> you know i couldn't count down the pages until he stopped stopped existing in the book and like you want to be afraid of him. You don't want to be like, just like, ugh, I hate you. You know, you want to genuinely feel fear about this guy. And I didn't. I just was like, why are you still here? You're ruining an otherwise enjoyable book. And my final takeaway is that <laughs> I get the horrible feeling I'm never going to love what is considered mainstream American horror literature. Because like I said before, I'm not really a big fan of Stephen King's books. I like the films uh, that are adapted from them, especially The Shining. And uh, those of you who do film know that <laughs> Stanley Kubrick's The Shining is nothing like the book. I mean, it, it's, it starts as like a, a jumping off p position and then just sort of goes in its own place. And that I like. Um, I like Misery. Uh, I like Stand By Me. Um, but yeah, the more m modern, more loyal adaptations. I'm just not a fan of either because I just think things get a bit wild and unbelievable. And I, I do like even in horror, believe it or not, I do like there to be like a basis of reality in these books. And I do think Stephen King is really good at writing like young boy characters. Um, so it seems a shame that he just like goes so utterly crazy that I kind of lose interest. And I felt the same um, with this book. There were characters in it that I really loved and like dynamics that I really loved, but then like there were fantasy or horror in inverted commas aspects that just like really ruined it for me because they were so unbelievable nah <laughs> and so because of this would i read this book again and um, the answer is no there were bits i really enjoyed such as the found family dynamic but there were parts i truly hated such as the characters vince and streck would I recommend this book? Uh, this would probably be no surprise that I would only recommend it to um, Dean Kuntz fans or Stephen King fans, you know, people who like that sort of book. Um, I don't understand why this book in particular is considered an American classic compared to all the other books written in America that aren't. I, I, I don't understand. I don't know if it's just like Zeitgeist, it came out at the right time, he's friends with the right people. I genuinely don't know. I don't think it's a bad book, but I don't see what makes it so exemplary that it needs to be on all these different lists. That being said, I do have some favourite quotations, so I shall read those out for you. First one. You've taught me that we're all needed, even those who sometimes think we're worthless, plain and dull. If we love and allow ourselves to be loved, well, a person who loves is the most precious thing in the world, worth all the fortunes that ever were. Second quotation. If wishes were Philip Mignon, would have eaten well at dinner. And the final quotation that you might notice uh, I'm using in the art is, You are strange people, but I like you anyway. And that comes from the dog, as the dog is super clever and learns to communicate using Scrabble tiles. And I thought that was a really cute idea, so I had to feature that in this picture. So let me know what you think. Have you read Watchers? <laughs> Do you agree with my opinions? Do you completely disagree? <laughs> Sound off in the comment section below and let's have a discussion, because I really want to start this book club off with a bang. And if it isn't such a popular series, I might just like move it over onto my Patreon because I do have another book that I've drawn art for, which I didn't record uh, because it was a horror book. And this time it actually was a proper horror book. And it was The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. Um, that one I did enjoy and I would love to discuss, uh, but I might leave that one just for my Patreon because it, I haven't recorded the art for it, but I do have completed art for it and <laughs> I would like to discuss it with people. And if you want to find my Patreon, the link is in the description box below. 
If you want to join in with what I'm reading for future Art and Book Club, I will leave what I'm reading in the community tab. And you can also suggest books for me to read in the future because I'm always looking for new recommendations whilst also being surrounded by books that I really need to read. <laughs> Are you like that? I just like, I go into a bookshop and I'm like, oh, pretty thing, pretty thing. And I buy it and I put it down and I'm just like, oh yeah, I remember that. I should really read that. Like five years later, the book is in the same place and I'm like, oh yeah, I should really read that. making it to the end of the video with me. If you liked this design, maybe you have a Labrador or a Golden Retriever of your own, you can buy this as a sticker or as a mug or whatever you put your heart's desire to from my Redbubble shop. Links will be in the description box below. If you could like, subscribe, turn on notifications, share this video and leave a comment maybe about what you thought about the book, what you thought about the art what book you'd like to see featured in the future, I would absolutely love it because all interactions help. <laughs> You can follow me at Enchanted Violin on Instagram and TikTok and Fred. Links will be in the description box below as well as links to my online common companions and my Patreon. And I'll see you next time. Bye!